into budgets a little bit, because this stuff's not cheap. I see it all the time. I'll ask somebody, what'd you pay to build this restaurant? Million, million and a half dollars. Really? So you're in the pizza sector, which the customer knows that if they buy a pizza without a coupon, they're an idiot. So now you're in the game of having to do a large pizza pie for almost half of nothing. And you're in a building that costs you a million and a half dollars? Or you're in a lease from a landlord that costs you eighteen or twenty thousand dollars a month? Okay, there is no way the financials on that's gonna add up. The rule of thumb is if you spend more then about 8% of your projected sales on the facility, you're going to have a difficult time making money. Now, there are some that are 10 and 11. I really like 5 and 6. But the rule of thumb, somewhere in there. You should be able to reasonably project your sales to create your budget so that literally I can sit here with the financials and I can sit here and say, they seem reasonable and customary. So then the next question comes, well, how do I know what I'm going to do in sales? Okay, you can join the National Restaurant Association, and they provide you all kinds of information on their website for data. There's all kinds of data sources. I can get what the average fast food restaurant does, what the average fine dining restaurant does, casual dining, check averages, number of seatings. It's endless. I can get all kinds of data, not just from the National Restaurant Association. There's plenty of sources that I can get that data from. A consultant could easily tell you, if they know their industry at all, they know industry averages. They're going to be able to tell you what the average hamburger restaurant does. They're going to be able to tell you what the average sub sandwich shop does, what the average pizza place, steakhouse. They're paid to know that. They're going to be able to just bang, there's the answer. They'll also be able to back it up with data from all these data sources. We spend countless hours reading data simply because that's what people pay us to know. Well, that information should all be accessible to you. By the way, if you get the right accountant that has restaurant experience, they'll already know that. Again, if you think a sub sandwich shop is going to do three and a half, four million dollars in sales, you're wrong. Won't happen. Now is that to say there aren't sub sandwich shops in the world that don't do that? Yeah, there are some that do, but it's an exception, not the rule. So you got to be able to build a budget. Well, so then it comes down to how much should my sales be based on the concept I'm in and the part of the country I'm in or the part of the world I'm in. How much should my cost of food be? How much should my cost of labor be? How much should my cost of facilities be? You should build that budget all the way down to the bottom. So you literally see all of your expenses and your profit and loss before you even think about opening a restaurant. Well, so that would come back to when people call us and say, I've already found the site, well, have you done the business plan? No. How do you know if the site is affordable based on the business plan? That's why they fail. They bought the site before they knew if they could afford it, or at least they're thinking they want to buy the site before they know if they can afford it. Corporations, national chains, think in terms of percentages. When you talk to their executives, a lot of times you'll hear them talk percentages. Food cost percent is this, labor cost percent is that, my percent of uh, repair and maintenance is this, my cost for the facilities percent is that. Entrepreneurs talk dollars. I can't spend percentages. I can only spend dollars. That's not to say I don't know the percentages. Yes, I know what my percentage of food cost is, and I know what it should be. What my food cost should be is what's called theoretical food cost. What my food cost is is what's called actual food cost. 
The difference between the two is how much money I'm leaving on the table between theoretical and actual. So I know what my percentages are. But an entrepreneur thinks in terms of dollars and cents, because I can only spend dollars and cents. A lot of times we see independents that don't have budgets. Rarely do we see national chains that don't have budgets. For the most part, the national chain has a budget. Independents, for the most part, don't. If independents would like to make more money, do a budget. I run a small business. I have my staff. I have my office expenses. I have my overhead. I literally, and I'm not teasing, I do a budget every week. I literally know my weekly expenses. I literally know my cash flow every day. Now, I understand I have a different kind of business than a restaurant day-to-day -day operating business. I have a different kind of business. I understand that. And I have different working parts of my business. We have our book business, which our books are in 76 countries around the globe. So we have to track book sales. We have our speaking business. We have our consulting practice. We have our investment business. So I have different aspects of my business. I, I understand that. But I think the key I'm wanting to teach you is the biggest, most successful restaurant chains in the world create budgets. What would make an independent think they shouldn't? They should. No way around it. They should control, micromanage every little number. A decent accountant who has restaurant experience will be able to help you create the budget, lay out the chart of accounts, Determine the theoreticals, what you should be running. Provide you industry averages. And if that accountant doesn't have that information, a restaurant consultant. <laughs>